Hello everybody, welcome back to another Minecraft Redstone video. Today I will be showing you six tips and tricks on how to improve your Minecraft Redstone building experience. These tricks are very useful to make your redstone more compact and look much nicer and also speed up the building process. So I hope you'll enjoy and let's get on to the list. Okay, so for this first one, uh, always do your redstone on brightly colored blocks. I know I do fall into uh, the category of not using brightly colored blocks because I prefer using iron over everything because it's just a nice plain block that you are able to place redstone on and it has pretty nice contrast of the red on the white. I think it works pretty well and it's just able to keep my mind in things. But using colored wool can help some people understand redstone better, especially when explaining it to other people. So when you point to something like this blue line here, you can say, when I flick the lever, the blue line will activate the piston. Like that, it activates the piston, and this yellow line will turn off the redstone torch. So being able to color code things is a lot easier, instead of just saying, this line turns this piston on, and this line turns this torch off. You can have colors to so people know exactly what you're talking about when you're talking about it. I know I have definitely do fall into the category of not using them, but still, if that helps you with remembering things, that will be the thing for you. Next, I would highly recommend that everybody gets a better redstone texture pack. So currently, I'm using a texture pack that makes cleaner redstone dust, so these nice straight lines and nice dots, but I'm also using a texture pack that makes sticky pistons have slime on the side of the face so you can e easily dis distinguish them from normal pistons and it's just a lot easier when you need to know which piston you're using. And also I have a texture pack that makes hoppers have arrows on them on the top and on the sides to see what direction they're moving in. So it's a lot easier to follow what they're doing. And where I got all these textures from was this website called VanillaTweaks.com. If you've heard of the YouTuber Exumavoid, he's the one that kind of runs the website, I guess you could put it that way. But on there you can find a bunch of other uh, texture packs that can just enhance the Minecraft experience. It just makes the textures a little bit more enjoyable to use and makes the game a lot better to play. But you could also only get uh, redstone or pistons or hoppers if you want. You don't have to get a, an, an entire texture pack. You can pick and choose which features you want and which ones you don't, which I think is really nice about the website. So if you want to visit, I will leave a link in the description. But otherwise, let's get on with the next one. So for this next tip, I will be showing you how you can clean up your redstone lines. So when you have a redstone line like this, where you have your power source, then you have a line of redstone, then you boost the signal, any other line of redstone, then you boost it again, you are wasting resources and it doesn't really look as good. Here does the same exact task for less resources. So from here, I'm going to be using kind of sciencey terms to explain how this works, but it will overall improve your understanding of redstone and will help you with all of that. So first off, this lever is powering this repeater, which is facing into this block, which is currently hard powering a block. What a hard powered block means is that the block is being powered in a way where redstone dust can get powered out of it and repeaters can take signal off of it and pistons work. Basically any kind of redstone signal works off of it. Other blocks that can uh, become, well, other things that can form a hard powered block are levers. So, this piece of black concrete right there is currently being hard powered, so you can take redstone uh, dust off, or redstone signal off of this side of it. And it's the same hard powering as a repeater facing into a block. But then, this is currently powering a redstone dot, which then this redstone dot soft powers all the blocks around it. So what soft powering is, is it is powering a block, but it's not as much as hard power 
which a repeater can do, meaning that it can't power any other redstone dust next to this block, but it can still activate pistons and repeaters can take signal off of it. But also only redstone dots can soft power all of the blocks around them. So all of these four blocks would get soft powered. But then when you redirect the signal like this, suddenly this block is no longer being soft powered, making this repeater turn off. But then when you break that, it re-updates and turns this repeater on. So that is how soft powering and stuff works. I hope you understood that. If not, it is an explanation for how this would work otherwise. This next trick is the one that I find the most amount of people always fall into the trap of doing that directly uh, corresponds with our last trick. It is on redstone corners like this where you have something along these lines or even if you have like your repeater over here and it's just a redstone line like this and you just need to boost the signal somewhere. Uh, please just when just move the repeater to the corner where you have it and replace the corner redstone with a block does the exact same thing uses one less redstone uh, piece and it looks a lot cleaner than just this mess it doesn't look as nice and this is just much more efficient for your resources and looks a lot more professional. Okay, so for the last two, number five and six, kind of go hand in hand with each other. So first off, I will be talking about the pick block feature. So if you don't know what the pick block feature is, what you do is you go up to a block and the uh, scroll wheel on your mouse that you use to move back and forth between your hotbar slots, you just press that down into your mouse and the block automatically appears in your hotbar. You just face what you want and middle click. And it brings the block straight into your inventory. Closest slot towards the left. So if you have the item already in your hotbar and you middle click, it just brings it straight up. So if I'm on the redstone torch now, middle click brings me straight to the piston. It's really useful for building contraptions so you don't have to go into here, search piston, and pull out the sticky piston. It's much faster just to be able to go up to one that you already have and middle click it and bring it straight into your hotbar. Also, if you are using a building block to place all your redstone on and you got rid of it to replace it with another item, you can just go up, right click, and then keep building. It's much faster and you don't lose your concentration on what you're doing because you don't have the proper blocks. And for that, this ties right into my next uh, point. So I would recommend having uh, hotbar slots. So as you can see, uh, I can just easily scroll through all these items by pushing numbers on my keyboard. So how I have this set is under options, you go to controls and you scroll all the way down to creative mode toolbar activator so these I don't really know well the load toolbar activator is automatically set to X uh, save toolbar activator is set to C I changed mine to Z because X and Z are next to each other and C I have for uh, zooming in on uh, Optifine I have Optifine installed so that's why that's there but I have toolbar activator set to Z so what you do is you get the hotbar that you want for redstone. I go from redstone in my first slot, repeater into my second, comparator, and so on for that. These are my most used redstone items that I put into my builds. That's why I have it as my first slot. So what you do is you just get the items that you want in the slot that you want. Hold down C, which is the default, but I have Z. You hold down a uh, C, and then you would press the number on your keyboard, whichever you want. So for this, I would hold down Z and then press 1 to save it to my first toolbar. And sorry for the white background, but if you can see, it's item toolbar saved redstone with plus 1. And that's also what 
this tab is here, all these save toolbars. Can even show you save toolbar with Z plus eight. So I've wanted to fill something in here. I could press Z and hold eight with whatever I currently have in my hotbar. And these are all of mine that I have saved. My basic redstone materials. And then for my second one, I have glass because glass is the best, newest uh, transparent block that you can use because you can place redstone on it and it's color coded so it works with your wool lines so you don't get them mixed up. The next I have my flying machine where I have terracotta, slabs, uh, immovable object, and then my uh, flying machine stuff. Then I also keep buttons there. Then I keep uh, the rail hotbar whenever I'm doing minecart stuff. Then I have storage system in case I need to mess around with that. Then I also have a sword with sharpness, looting, and fire aspect. So in case there are mobs in the way, I can just insta-kill them. And then here is one that I used for recording recently. But otherwise, toolbars are very useful when you want to pull up tools really fast. And ever since I started using them, I do not regret it because they are very useful. And I think everybody should get into the habit of using them. But otherwise, I hope all of you have enjoyed watching this video. And I would like to thank all of you for watching. And I'll see you all in the next episode.